Greetings and salutations. My name is Joshua Story with Dungeons Divided. Uh, in two weeks, we'll be diving into and playing a brand new game that just hit shelves. It's one of the hottest franchises on the market, AMC's The Walking Dead. And we've all seen the trivia game, the card game, the video game, uh, uh, some of the, the board game and everything else. But thanks to uh, Free League Publishing, we now have ex uh, access to the tabletop RPG. So tonight, it's my great pleasure to have an opportunity to sit down and chat with the game's director. And uh, I'm actually going to allow him to introduce himself. So at this point, uh, for our viewers, can you go ahead and give us your full name, please? Hello. Thanks for having me. My name is Matthias Jonsson Hake, if you pronounce it in Swedish. Matthias is usually the way it goes when I, I uh, converse with people in America. So, you know, I was debating. I was going to say it was a, it was a, either Matthias or um, uh, Matthias, and I let's go with Matthias. Let's okay. Let's, let's make sure we do it right. <laughs> we'll do it right the first time. So, um, let's see here. Uh, you know, I you know I was kind of doing some research on you, and just to yeah. kind of just to kind of get prepared, and you know, I came across one of your old interviews you did from like 2019 on on mm -hmm. the uh, kickstarting. Uh, campaigns. The, the uh, good old COVID times. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. And I, I did take note that uh, it seemed like uh, no one really had any questions for you. So, and you just had to kind of just talk. So, um, hopefully I can, I can sort of keep that conversation flowing for you here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm not opposed to just talking. Uh -huh quite comfortable doing that but yeah please if if you have if you have some way to make this more interesting <laughs> please help me <laughs> of course of course well let's start with something simple like how long have you been in game development uh as a profession i would say 2011 so 12 years 12 years okay about um that's when i quit my tenure at the university because I wasn't really happy in academia mm -hmm. and I had built up sort of a, a, a contact web of contacts in the gaming industry after having been a hobby game developer for like 10 or another 12 years. Holy cow. Years. Yeah. Um, let me circle back to that. But uh, in 2011, I started in in uh, video games mm -hmm. uh, development, writing story, uh, developing settings, game worlds, and, and whatnot for a Swedish company called Paradox Interactive. Okay. Uh, who mostly makes um, uh, grand strategy games, but but also some more action oriented and a little bit story oriented games. So um, at that time, I did not expect that it would be possible to make a living out of making role playing games. Uh, but me and a couple of friends decided to, to give it a shot and to give it a real shot, you know, mm -hmm. a shot like work 70 to 80 hours weeks uh, on no pay for a couple of years just to see if it's possible to do something with the hobby that we loved and that we we felt we had something to contribute to and well yeah today uh free league uh i've i've, I've had a decent pay for like five years uh, by wow. now so yeah wow a living that's, that's making role-playing games. <laughs> that is a long time. I mean, you, you've got to love it if yeah. you've spent that much time and, and that much energy invested into it. Yeah, or Bravo, be sir. super, super stubborn, you know. <laughs> uh, it, it, when we started, uh, as I said, we I have had this as a hobby for a number of years. During mm -hmm. We started at the turn of the millennium making a, a, a Swedish-only game called Mutant Heirs of Doom which is like the predecessor to the current year zero that, that is made by Free League. And uh, we kept it going for seven or eight years while we, you know, 
went to university and got families and kids and whatnot. And eventually it was like too much to to have a hobby that, that yeah, was that time consuming and also a bit risky because it costs having role playing games as a hobby <laughs> or making, you know, printing and shipping and whatnot. So um, we closed shop at about 2008. Uh, and I, for a long time, I thought that was it. But then, yeah, when we started up again, I was like, I will, I don't have time for a hobby. So if we're going to do this, we have to do it in a way that it's least, it, it's at least feasible that it will lead to some form of livelihood, right? <laughs> some bread on the table. Now, did, uh, did, um, did, yeah. Do you have a? Are you, are you married? You have you have kids of your own? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh wow! Yeah. The so leap that, of you, faith. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm kind of. Yeah. We, we, I have to have a long talk to my wife about that. <laughs> but I mean, she she's also in academia. Uh, she saw that I wasn't happy where I was. So the fact that I, but it, it, there was always the chance that I would have to crawl back <laughs> and, and beg, beg to have my old job back. Uh, luckily, not yet anyway, we'll see. Now there, there was a there was a question I was going to ask you um, mm. uh, a little bit and a little bit later, but um, seeing as we has, how it keeps coming up, um, so so you if I'm not mistaken, you do have a PhD right in behavioral science. Yeah, in pedagogics or education, if you want. So. Okay, so I guess we should be calling you a doctor. Uh, <laughs> yeah, two Americans have a tendency to to you like your titles. Uh, oh, yes. I, I, titles are important. I, I, I yeah, yeah, I would only be feel uncomfortable. I think <laughs> you never hear that in in Sweden or in Europe either. I I would say, but no, please don't, please okay. don't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right, all right. We'll we'll avoid that. But um, mm. so you do have this degree. Uh, and and, and uh, again, in behavior and, and animals, and I guess I guess that would be in animals and humans, and just kind of interactions. And so, how has that kind of uh, impacted your career as a as a as a game director? Uh, first of all, I, I saw also because you were kind enough to send the the questions beforehand. Mm -hmm. I think it maybe touched on the subject of game director first, so people know what I oh, actually. Oh, of course, do. <laughs> of course. Yeah, we can we can uh, back that up with what. Because we know what we we've heard of director in in, t in TV, film, theater, mm -hmm. you know, video games. But how does it work with uh, a, a TTRPG? So like yeah, um, <laughs> again, titles. We are not very good at at at, at that. And ga game director is not really a, a formal title. Um, uh, maybe game or production manager or mm -hmm. project manager or and and in this case we we've been two so uh the the game has been like developed under the wings of me and thomas Herrenstam, who is uh another co-owner of free league and, mm -hmm. and has done loads of games like alien and blade runner and whatnot uh, and we have sort of teamed up on this one uh game director is a term we use talking to media to 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 sort of indicate that uh, the one responsible okay the one the one the one who who is accountable for what's put been put out there so that's me uh other than that i i i write i do game design i edit a lot and we're I think later going to talk about other games that I've been part of, but mm -hmm. uh, in, in when it comes to being sort of in charge of game devel development and then product development, because that's sort of two different things. Mm -hmm. I think I bring a lot from 
my years in academia and especially you know being a, a researcher in the field of social science is very much about writing <laughs> about structuring uh, uh, your thesis or your if you write even if you're writing an article so it's it's a lot about you know uh, uh, the handicraft of, of producing uh, a work uh, or a volume right uh, it can be short or long so I, I think I bring a lot in that respect uh, then you can say that what I what I was mainly interested in when I I did my ten years of at the at the university as a researcher is sort of um, educational sociology I would say so the question was centered around human becoming if you want to be mm -hmm. pretentious how do we become who we become in a general sense mm -hmm. And of course, designing game worlds, settings, I, I, I think I have a lot of material to draw from, uh, from way back when. Uh, it, 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 you can say basically that I use models that I, I, I employ to analyze what is in modern society mm -hmm. I use them to you know sort of uh, in a retro kind of way to instead of analyzing what is using those models to design something mm -hmm. that isn't other than in our imagination so yeah I think I, I, I really do owe a lot to those years uh, in in uh, in educational science yeah that's, that's a oh, lot. that was cryptic but <laughs> the short answer is yes yeah I, I would i would imagine so and in, in being able to understand people a little bit and, and sort of put yourself in in their their mindset especially when you're yeah. designing a it, game and everything yeah I, I think one of the things that where it shows the most clear is that the games or settings i design seldom has a clear cut good or bad mm -hmm. only perspectives and that is maybe typical for a social scientists it's, I... it's all about perspectives so there is good and bad in the world but what you deem to be good or bad is only a question of perspective so in fact there are many goods and many bads in the same setting depending on who you are you will have a certain point of view and therefore you will 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 see the world in a certain way and yeah we we know both you and me other role playing games that don't have that approach <laughs> let <laughs> me put it like that <laughs> yeah. sort of has it in the rules who are good and who are bad right yeah. and, but there's always those gray areas you know where you can sort of teeter back and forth yeah. Of course, there are those gray areas, definitely, but more, more, more importantly, uh, moral judgments is very much a question of perspective mm. and point of view. So, so you and that, that, yeah, that's what you can see in most of the games I'm working on. Yeah. So you obviously you put a lot of time into games uh, over the years. Uh, how long yeah. do, does it typically take to sort of develop one of them? So, I mean, Ooh. for Walking Dead, for example. Yeah. Uh, Walking Dead actually started uh, without me because I was involved in another project or in several other pro projects back then. Uh, Are any of them available uh, right now? Yeah. yeah. We can talk about that later. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> He's but, trying to stay Walking on that Dead list. Started I love it. With, <laughs> yeah. Walking Dead started with us getting... Um, giving Nils Hinze, the, the lead game designer on this game, he has, he has also been the lead on Basen, on Tales from the Loop, uh, Things from the Flood, and also an upcoming game that we are about to kickstart in a couple of weeks. Ooh. Or, 
or maybe next week, uh, the Electric State. Okay. Based based on uh, the art books of Simon Stolenhardt. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, so he he made a draft uh, of the whole shebang, and then it went back and forth between him and Thomas a couple of times. Uh, so I I can't say exactly, but I I think that it's at least three three years in the making. Uh, this particular game, and that. I would say from from concept to fruition or to print, uh, I would say that that three two to three years, depending on uh, how much time you are able to put in that particular project. Because obviously, working in the games industry, we have so many IPs and brands and licenses today that we can't really focus on just the one game at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, a couple of years, up to three years, I would say. Wow, wow. It's fairly normal, yeah. And that, I mean, that, that translates to the same thing as, say, uh, like a video game or uh, other mediums. Mm. They typically take about the same amount of time when they start. Yeah, know, but they are, a little, yeah, a lot more people involved. Mm. <laughs> so, uh, we are typically a team of uh, one writer, one editor, one brand manager, and then there is uh, the layout artist, of course, that has to work with uh, an illustrator and what do you call them then? Uh, yeah, and uh, artists who make both pictures, and then you have the other one, uh, often oh. someone making maps or. Yeah. What not? So it's it's like mm, eight eight to ten people making one game, whereas that you know a making a, a v yeah, and and we are a small team. We are six people, co-owners who who work. I, I would say five of us are working uh, full time, uh, and then we have freelancers. Mm -hmm. uh, who are pretty steady, has been with us for some time, like Buell in PR and, and Anna in event planning. And we have uh, also a, a really great support team that has been with us for quite some time, uh, with customer support mm -hmm. uh, and such. Uh, and, and also, you know, for economics. And in, in the beginning, we did everything ourselves, of course, because that's how you do it when you when you when you're a startup uh, but luckily today we have the opportunity to to tie some talent to our our great quest of making role playing games for the world well you know we're always we're always available if you need some uh, if you need some help there <laughs> oh hey you never know um you never know never know but um Going backwards a little bit, how how did you get involved in the Walking Dead game? Um, uh, I love the Walking Dead. Oh, uh, and and out of the co-owners of Free League, I am the one by far who loves it the most. <laughs> so that's that's the reason why I knew already when I when I um, when it was decided that we were going to make this game, mm -hmm. I knew already then that I will be involved in this. Uh, uh, but uh, as Nils Hinze was the lead designer on it, um, <clears throat> I, I could sort of, and I think that was a good thing because when I when I did jump in, uh, when was that? Like a year and a half ago, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, I could do so with pretty fresh eyes, uh, and we we had like a manuscript that was a complete draft, and I can go at it tooth and and yeah hammer and chisel and whatnot and just hack away uh, and or or rather that that's not how we do it uh i proposed where to apply the hammer and chisel yeah uh, and do editings and rewrites and whatnot so uh well you're yeah so you're a fan how uh, yeah. i assume uh how much have you watched of it have you seen the the up-to-date 
Like, yeah, uh, in in Sweden we are actually a little bit behind. Okay. When it comes to content from AMC, uh, I should probably get some form of technical assistance in order to be able to, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, pay for uh, AMC Live or or one of those channels where where mm -hmm. they send stuff. Uh, but no, uh, yeah, of course I've seen. Uh, the Walking Dead series, mm -hmm. all the way through uh, season eleven. Uh, I have seen most of Fear the Walking Dead. I have seen uh, some of Beyond. Mm -hmm. uh, I have not been able to see uh, the Daryl one or you know the newer spin-offs. I haven't seen those. Have you? Uh... And they weren't. They weren't really released before we finished up the game either. So, have you? Uh, we, I know you guys are working on this, and and uh, there are some other titles um, that I know your company has uh, has worked specifically with the original developers. But mm. have you had a chance to work with AMC? Did, have you talked to them at all? Or I I haven't talked directly to them. We we go by uh, Genuine Entertainment, Joel Lefavre. Mm -hmm. Who is our liaison or mm -hmm. go between in America? Right. No, well, we use liaison uh, as well. Yeah, <laughs> and I, I think I think that's a, a good thing uh, because uh, you know, for, for me, this is this is really the first time that I'm working on a on a li uh, uh, on a big license uh, because normally I feel. A little bit. I wouldn't say scared to do it, but I constrained by having to work on someone else's baby, <laughs> baby, not mm -hmm. baby. Their, their, their IP. IP. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> uh, and and there's also production-wise a bit complicated, where you have to have this approval process and uh, processes and whatnot and. Yeah, I, I guess I'm I'm a little bit of a control freak and whatnot. I want to feel that I have, you know, uh, the final say. And and when working with with games like uh, The Walking Dead universe role playing game, you don't have final say. And that's also true for Alien and Blade Runner and and whatnot. Uh, and uh, my friend Joe. I don't know if you, you'll get a chance to talk to him too. If yeah, you do, I, yeah. I, I hope he's, you. Uh, he's just... a local to LA, actually. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. We're, we're trying to work on setting that up in person. Mm. So. No, he, he is really good at sort of balancing between these uh, creative. Uh, I, I shouldn't say egos, but <laughs> you know, when 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 you're an artist, right? Yeah. And and he is in between, and he he is very good at sort of yeah making us understand each other. In in this case, he hasn't had very much hard, very hard work because uh, we've we've seen eye to eye on almost everything, mm -hmm. uh, us and the creative team or at AMC, and it's been yeah it's been again I can't wait to meet them, uh, and I hope I will pretty soon uh, but um, during the, the process it, it shows that many of them know what role-playing game games are mm -hmm. and uh, also many of them play role-playing games as mm -hmm. I understand it and yeah they have been been a, a great tip not least when it comes to you know uh, precision in terms of, of uh, of language, you know, role a uh, role playing game's core book like this one, it is actually an instructional manual, right? Still waiting on my physical copy. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, uh, you, you gotta, this is a manual. Well, you gotta an, you gotta do me a favor. When I talked to yeah. uh, uh, Boel, is that her yeah. name? Bol Boel. Bol. Right? Yeah. Bol. Bol. When I talked to Bol, uh, I gotta see if I can get you to uh, send me a signed copy. Can you do that? Would you do that? Yeah, I can. I can certainly. I'll, I'm on my way to Stockholm next week, so maybe. 
Maybe. Okay. Maybe we can set that up. You sign it, say, say, <clears throat> from the doctor. From, from Dr. I'm just Johnson. I'm just <laughs> no, but the thing is with role playing games books, as manuals or instruction books, mm -hmm. uh, language or, uh, you know, precision is super important. And I'm not American. Mm -hmm. I'm not English. Uh, and neither is Nils Hinse. Mm -hmm. So having a team that really knows the, the tone and the feel and also what role playing games gameplay is all about uh, going through your text and helping you sort of proof and edit the language not altering stuff but just making it more localizing to it. the point yeah mm -hmm. yeah localize it basically uh, mm -hmm. that's been a really big help uh, and and often also they they can point to stuff that is unclear uh what do you mean here is it this or this and we go oh i see why you're confused no we mean like this and then they can help us you know bring out the the core of what we want to to communicate to the, the players and the gms well we're um we're really excited to play it's a huge book i think it was like 180 pages if i'm not mistaken something off something like that it's yeah it's huge but we're really excited to play it um I've you can actually go been... uh, if you want to start you can go with the starter set it's like a condensed rule book of only 40 pages nah, so. nah, we've been playing games for a while <laughs> <laughs> i threw that out the window no we're going straight in we're diving deep into it mm. uh we it's going to be fun um you know you were talking about uh you're a fan of the show i've actually been on that back lot of the walk no Dead. yeah so oh, I, I was I was uh, I've worked in film and television for over a decade, and mm. uh, I was uh, producing a um, uh, we were shooting a uh, what they call a uh, test pilot basically, mm. or a um, uh, concept short. Actually, it was more of a concept short for for a show, and our costumes that we were picking up uh, from one of our, uh, our wardrobe mistresses was actually on the back lot. So we had to go mm. to the back lot in Georgia. We drove from mm. Orlando, Florida, which is like about a five and a half, uh, six hour drive to get there. And ended up on this place in the middle of nowhere, small dirt road. Mm. You get to like a small gate and I'm not gonna you know, specify where it is, but you get to a gate and it's just one little small guard shack with the little mm. gate. There's no fence, <laughs> which is kind of funny. Mm. You've got a guard shack, no fence. I'm like, what is, what is this? Uh, that that's crazy, but it's super a, easy for the workers to get in. Oh, they had, yeah, exactly. They had costumes yeah. everywhere, just racks and racks of of, mm. of Walker outfits. But really cool stuff. So if you get a chance uh, and you talk to AMC, you ask him, mm. ask him if you can get a, a, a sneak peek or a tour or something. Uh, mm. Be a good opportunity. Um, uh, so. You know, we we're talking about AMC. Have you um, have you also got kind of bounced off of uh, the creators? Um, so Robert Kirkman, Tony Moore, or Charlie uh, Adler? Abs absolutely not. I would say. <laughs> <With emphasis. laughs> no, the thing is, the thing is that uh -huh. uh, this this game. I I'm glad that I can can sort of uh, make this that clear that this is a game that is based on the TV show. Mm -hmm. So not the, the, the comics and so on. So, uh, but, but I mean, since the TV shows draws quite heavily from the, <laughs> the original the, material. It, would, it would be super, <laughs> super interesting to, to talk to and uh, to hear if, yeah. It would be super interesting to hear comments in general about what people think of this game. It just started trickling in because, you know, we had the launch just the other day. Uh, yes. Yeah, a couple of days ago. It's it's Wednesday, right, where you are? Uh, yes, you're, for the next Yeah, you're speaking to the minutes. future. It's, it's uh, yeah, it's Thursday here. I so need a lot you, of numbers for tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, for you, it, it's like yesterday the game released, and uh, uh, we we hope that that people will find that. We, I, I personally, I think that Nilsa has uh, Nilsa has has made a great job in 
gamifying the feel and style of the TV series. Uh, if you if you if you don't like this game and how it plays, I think it's because maybe you weren't such a big fan of the show, mm -hmm. uh, or you haven't actually seen more than a couple of episodes, and you think that it's all about slaughtering undead uh, in droves. Uh, and that's 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 not what the game is about because that's not what the series is about. It, yeah, and actually, you know, it's it's funny you mention that. A friend of mine, um, uh, it was actually on the show. Uh, she played uh, Alicia. I think, oh, yeah. So I think it was season either four or five. I can't remember. Um, but I, I, I wanted I wanted to try and see. Well, no, never mind. I'm going to dive into that. I was trying to get her to. Maybe make an appearance on her, her little one-off. I was like, please play, please play. But I don't know if she's busy or or uh, whatnot. But um... no, it's. A, I mean, when it comes to established actors, you always have. Uh, you know, always have the question of some agent that that has a say. I'm. I'm guessing. So. Yeah, probably. But I mean, there's ways around that. Um, you know. <laughs> I'll tell you this though, I, I, I really love the way you guys uh, are kind of sticking with the path to, that's similar to the show itself. I mean, uh, mm. the humans themselves are more dangerous than the walkers, we all know that. Um, mm. But with the new content, with the new releases, and and the new uh, the type of walkers that they've kind of introduced, to like the, uh, oh, yeah. the, the acid walkers, the, the fire ones, um, I know this just came out, but are you guys also looking to expand and, and sort of drop maybe additional content later oh yeah it, it, or is that something you can talk about <laughs> um, yeah yeah I, I can't talk specifically about any particular projects that right. we have okay yeah i don't want to because we are not really ready to announce uh, okay. also we uh, we have stuff sort of slow cooking mm -hmm. uh, or just uh, on a concept stage lots of stuff but we also want to see how the game is received, of course. I mean, it's it's just l launched right now, so let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's let's see where this lands and see what people uh, want uh, from supplements or or new, other kind of modules. Uh, to address your specific question about other kinds of walkers, walkers in the in the in the the base game is, is most almost like a, an environmental mm -hmm. threat rather than uh, NPCs with with stats that you that you fight against on an individual basis. Uh, I'm guessing that there there is nothing that mechanically would prevent us from introducing other kinds of walkers with special abilities, so to speak. Mm -hmm. uh, exactly how we would treat those um, that that is for the future to decide. I'm I'm thinking my um, one one of the things that I'm I'm pretty sure we will consider doing at least is is more uh, so-called survival mode scenarios uh, you have uh, one short one in the core book and and an, uh, another little bit neater one in the in the starter set mm -hmm. uh, and they are sort of like uh, if you have played alien uh, it's like cinematic scenarios where it's more or less they come with pre-made characters with pre-made sort of complicated relations to each other and then it's assumed that not everyone is going to survive the scenario so it's it's like a one shot and we will probably make some of those and it wouldn't surprise me if maybe special kinds of walkers or walkers with special abilities might pop up in one of those uh yeah <laughs> scenarios okay Right, right. We didn't say anything. Gotcha, gotcha. Mm. <clears throat> okay. No, I'm, I'm, I'm just spitballing here. It's I, just, no, yeah, I, I, it, it, it's a good idea, right? Mm -hmm. Good idea. It is. Yeah. 
Okay. So, um, so this game is basically based on successes or failures. It's a D6 system. Um, so, having said that, this game is all about the drama. That's part of The Walking Dead. Uh, but what about combat? So, I one of the thing when I was deep diving, I know the game just came out, but what I notice people will notice, um, they're curious about why. Or what was the reasoning behind deciding to avoid or not use uh, initiative roles for, like, combat? Right. Um, Neil Sinse suggested it. We haven't haven't tried it that way in, you know, we, we are working with basically the same uh, rules engine mm -hmm. uh, for... Alien, Blade Runner, Dragon Bay, now uh, The Walking Dead, and so on. It's called the Year Zero engine because it, it first was announced in Mutant Year Zero. Oh, just saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll get back to that in a while. Um, <laughs> I'm sure. Uh, and and yeah, in this case, I know that when Nils Hinze plays this himself, mm -hmm. uh, there are sort of two two ways to do combat in the Walking Dead universe against NPCs. Uh, and one is called duels. It's basically one and one, one on one or maybe two on one. Mm -hmm. And you handle it with opposed roles. Super simple, super fast. But we, uh, he also suggested uh, in that uh, for bigger gatherings, like, you know, showdowns at some haven mm -hmm. uh, that we know from the, the story, uh, the stories uh, on, on the screen, uh, he suggested a more elaborate way of, uh, of dealing with, with combat situation. It's still based on opposed roles, but it uh, allows for more people to be involved at the same time. And to make this as easy and as fluent, maybe, mm -hmm. as possible, um, he suggested that we, we skip initiative and instead, instead go by people announcing what kind of actions they want to perform and then have the initiative be, be based on, on, on that type, different type of actions. So. Uh, shame to say, I, I can't remember exactly now. Movement goes first, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, and then um, everyone announces, or, or the game master asks if anyone is going to act in the first phase, namely the movement phase. I think it was and the movement players... cover, I think was the second one. There was like five phases, right? Uh, I think cover is cover is part of movement. Oh, okay. So the second one is is uh, ranged combat mm -hmm. if you want to shoot, and then there is close combat, and then there is aid. I think. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you want to patch someone up or or whatever, mm -hmm. and then there was a scene. anyway. I haven't played for three four months now, so sorry if I'm I'm uh, butchering this, but. Um, yeah, and, and when we play tested it over and over, uh, because most, uh, in most cases, we use initiative cards for, uh, for in cards for initiative. So you basically draw, uh, from a set of 10 or 12 cards and the one who go, uh, has the lowest number goes first and so on. Uh, so then idea. we try. Yeah, it, it works like a charm uh, for most uh, of our games. But in this case, it felt it felt really natural and it felt, felt like <clears throat> a, a cool game flow came out of that experience. So, yeah, it's the, the idea is from Nils Hintze and me and Thomas agree that this, this really works for this game. So, yeah, it's nothing more than that. Okay. You know that's a, that's another good idea is uh, especially when we have um, people that are we, we say uh, overzealous or, or uh, excited yeah. very excitable uh, yeah. they get so worked up and then they go I want to go I want to do this I want to do this I want to do this <laughs> it's like whoa slow down let me deal with this first 
Mm. You know, and I think that the card is a is a great way to uh, sort of get around that for the bigger fights. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But but in this case, I, I think it uh, it should work pretty well uh, with the with the face system that we have here as well because it it's it's um, the the thing I I really like about it is that combat doesn't become because when you when when you have initiatives uh, very clearly that can vary from from turn to turn and you can you know switch initiative with your with your ally and you can have abilities you can switch initiative with some enemy and whatnot it becomes a very much a tactical game mm -hmm. uh when when you use initiative initiative cards as as in dragon bean for instance mm -hmm. we we didn't want that kind of tactical <laughs> aspect to combat in the walking dead because the game shouldn't be about combat uh combat is a part of the an essential part of the story and and it's super dangerous it's super deadly uh because that is how it's supposed to be especially i mean if you come across walkers there's always the risk of getting bitten and and then your character will die and and that may happen and uh, uh you know on 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 a failed role you may get attacked because you make uh, you 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 mess up basically you roll a walker on your stress die, you mess up, uh, meaning that you cause a lot of noise and a couple of walkers appear making a surprise attack and you end up getting it. That can happen. They, um, I actually ended up getting a message earlier today from, um, from our usual DM, uh, from mm -hmm. our other game. And uh, he said something like, you know, it was like a little meme, and it said something about when the long-term dungeon master or game master, in this case, uh, becomes a player. And he's just—it's a meme. It's giving you the finger, and he's like, he's like, war is coming, or something like that. You know, he's gonna because he gets the chance to to cause the chaos. And my response to him was, uh, "Hey, just remember, crying is a free action." Oh. <laughs> He goes. That's a good one. Yeah, I said. Remember, crying is a free action. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, crying as a player or as a player character. That's also. Oh, we well, our our games. We get involved in the game. We are play, we yeah. RP enough that uh, I've been on camera. I've I've had tears rolling down my face. Uh, yeah. For, for you know character loss at some dramatic moment, and I'm just. And then I, I, we were joking about it. I said, you know, it's just a character. It's just a game. It's just a game. Uh, well, Matthias, we've kind of touched on it, but what other what other games have you have you had an opportunity to work on? Uh, anything? Yeah. Like the uh, last couple can years? you pick up that box again? <laughs> Are you talking about the Dragon Bay? Yeah. 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 yeah so, at the Dragon Bay. Can't Bane. you see the sim similarity here <laughs> in in the font? Oh yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, this is actually the Swedish name for for Dragon Bane. It's called Drakar och Demoner. It's, oh. it's uh, dragons and demons. Uh, but for obvious reasons, we couldn't use that translation in English. Oh, dragons I see. Dragons and dragons and demons. Now that 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 would be risky. So Dragon Bane, it is. So that is uh, my uh, I. I'm going to show you now because I just have them on the table there. This is my maybe. Uh, is Simbarum. that is that Forbidden Lands in English? No, that's Simbarum in English. Oh, okay, okay. I thought I thought <laughs> I thought it was this one. Oh no no no! But <laughs> I, I, I circle back to that. Now, so this 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 is the game that you know I I told you about when when I didn't want to have a hobby again. Mm -hmm. uh, if we're going to do this, let's do this for real. And this this discussion was actually held in the shade of the blue mosque in istanbul we were on a role playing games weekend me and my friends uh and the game that came came out of that discussion was symbrom and it, so it launched 2016 in 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 english uh and so symbrom is the game that i am sort of really the game director of <laughs> if you want 
Uh, then uh, I had to, because it's been a while, um, I have worked on, on, right now I'm working mostly on Dragon Bane. Um, uh, doing editing and project managing and also writing uh, for for upcoming products. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I have worked on Coriolis as a brand manager or, or director also for some of the, the, the books. Forbidden Lands, Vess and, and Tales from the Loop, I've done editing and yeah, some small bit, bits and pieces of writing as well. Uh, the only games that I haven't actively worked on, I mean, we're such a small team that we tend to, even if if, if, if we don't work on all the games, we always discuss uh, the games that we, that, that the company makes. Uh, but Alien, Blade Runner and Twilight, 2000 are games that I haven't worked actively upon. I have, you know, read and discussed and, and play tested uh, to some extent, uh, but but not actively worked on. As I said, I'm 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 more of the. I love to work on on the licenses or IP that we own ourselves. I love the freedom that I get from that and the control, I guess, as well, the creative control. Those titles we have not we have yet to try ourselves. That's still on our list of things to do. Mm. So, no, um, I, ho I hope you will enjoy yourselves. Oh, absolutely. You browse our catalog and, and, and give it a spin at the table. Oh, we will, so totally. Our... Well, um, we'll, be, uh, we're, we'll be running our live play session on Twitch uh, so that'll be December, a uh, Sunday, December tenth at five thirty p.m. Pacific time, which is uh, California time, at Dungeons Divided. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it'll then be likely uploaded to YouTube later during that week. For those that can't um, can't make the live stream, I would imagine mm -hmm. you probably fall in that category too. Um, I'm guessing I'm fast asleep. I I would imagine night. so. Yeah. Uh, do you think you'll be able to check it out when it hits YouTube? Give us, a, uh, give us your opinion. I, I think if you email me a reminder, uh, I will definitely do. Oh, we can total. We can definitely do that. Mm. Um, well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the Walking Dead tabletop uh, role-playing game is available now through Free League Publishing. Uh, we're going to be doing a game, uh, like I said, a Let's Play coming up on the tenth. I highly suggest you guys check it out. Um, I know we're going to <laughs> stop by, let us know what you think. Maybe it might entice you to get your own copy. Uh, once again, I wanted to thank our guest today, uh, the game director, uh, Matthias. Uh, uh, thank you so much for being with us today. Ah. It was a great day to, a great way to start a day here in, in uh, wintry Sweden. So. <laughs> Don't hurt yourself shoveling snow. <laughs> no, no. Uh, I lost my wife to to do the shoveling today. So. Oh, nice, nice. I think you have to do something sweet or for her now. Um, he, he he sure could do some exercise <laughs> instead of just gaming away. <laughs> heavy computer game. So. Oh, I get that. Well, thank you again so much for your time. It's been an absolute pleasure. I've enjoyed chatting with you today, and uh, well, I'm, I'm looking forward to, to meeting with Joe as well. Um, yeah, but, well, I hope you get together. Yes. Definitely. Well, I think that's going to cover it. Thank you again so much, and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. We'll, uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll reach out again.